Another day, another derailment, or at least that's how it is starting to feel as crews continue to try to repair the damage on the red line after a train came off its tracks and smashed into traffic signaling equipment near the JFK UMass station on Tuesday. Just a couple of days after, 11 people were hurt when a Green Line train derailed near Kenmore Station on Saturday. The driver of that train has since been suspended. And these are just the latest in a long line of derailments for the MBTA, which has had more than 40 train derailments in the past five years, the second worst record of any metro transit system in the U.S., according to a new report from the Boston Globe. The red line delays are expected to continue through Friday, at least, according to T officials, as repairs proceed and transit officials signal the trains by hand. And it all couldn't come at a worse time for the transit system, which is set to implement fare hikes on July 1st, leaving some people wondering, what exactly are we paying for? Joining me to discuss are Boston City Councilor Michelle Wu, Charlie Chippio, Senior Fellow at the Pioneer Institute and former Policy Director for Governor Romney, and Chris Dempsey, Director of Transportation for Massachusetts, a coalition of organizations aiming to improve transportation across the uh, the state. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Adam. So uh, I have talked about transit problems on this set before when I'm keeping Jim's seat warm. I've done it, I think, with uh, some of you, maybe not all of you. This week, to me, feels different. And I'm wondering if you have the same feeling that I do. I think so. I think we're in a transportation crisis. And the public understands that we are at a tipping point, both on our rails, but also on our roads at the same time. And Adam, I've heard you talk about your commute and how long it takes you to get to the North Shore. So this is not isolated to just the red line or just the green line. It's a total system breakdown, and we need urgency from our elected leaders to bring change. It seems to me like it's it's, uh, the way people are feeling right now, but also the way some powerful individuals and institutions are responding to this. I want to just mention a couple things that, that caught my eye. The Boston Globe ran an editorial titled, Going Off the Rails on Charlie Baker's Train. I wanted to play Crazy Train in the show, and I wasn't able to do it. But to my mind, this was the, the toughest editorial that I've seen the Globe bad page run about the governor. Uh, Marty Walsh, the mayor of Boston, tweeted that this week's MBTA derailments are unacceptable. We need answer solutions and more funding, and we need it now. Of course, Marty Walsh has this famously close relationship with Governor Baker. And then there was uh, Jim Rooney, who tweeted that we are in a crisis state. I think he said our failing public transit system and traffic congestion in and around greater Boston are at crisis levels and impacting our region's competitiveness. So this uh, is this is something new, right, Charlie? Yeah, I mean, look, the difference is I think that the time when people were even more kind of wound up about this was uh, was 2015, you know, during Snowmageddon. But I think it was different then because everybody was sort of more uh, it was it was uh, impetus for everybody to kind of work together and try to fix it. Now it's a few years later, and there's much more there's much more anger. It's not not so sort of it's not so sort of unified as it was then. And there's not a once in a generation right. weather event that you can well, blame right. on. Michelle, well, let me ask you. You've been very critical of the status quo and the way the governor is approaching the status quo. As you guys know, and many of our viewers will know, the governor has said his administration is going to spend $8 billion over the next five years to do things like replace track, replace signals. What is Governor Baker not doing that he should be? We are at this place now of two major incidents in a week, right before fares are going to go up, people being driven away from, scared away from public transportation in droves now. We are at this point because of a failure to act all along the way for several years of this administration. And the constant refusal to say we're going to seek a big picture vision and find revenue for it, now just trying to define progress as reaching, having a plan to reach bare minimum functionality a number of years from now and then claiming victory when we're inching in the right direction. This is not acceptable anymore for the the region. Okay, so indulge me and engage in a little thought experiment here. Let's say you were governor of Massachusetts. What would you be doing right now in the wake of these two derailments? We need to have a big picture vision to invest in the MBTA to recognize just how important of a lifeline that is. That means finding new revenue sources, going to the legislature and saying congestion pricing, gas tax, surcharge on Uber and Lyft, everything's on the table. Let's figure out how we find the revenues. And then what is the plan? Electrification, regional rail, more frequent service. How do we get to that level of service, the geographic footprint, the system that our riders deserve? There's a lot of complex stuff in there, which we unfortunately probably don't have time to unpack. But 
Do you have a sense of what the price tag would be for what you're talking about? I mean, if the governor is $8 billion in five years to make repairs and, and get toward the way things ought to be bare minimum isn't enough, how much money would what you're thinking of cost? You know, so the reports are at putting up more and more different types of numbers. I think the bottom line is that there's a tremendous cost to doing nothing and to delaying. The longer that we delay, the more expensive it is even just to fix it to the point where it barely works. And so these revenue sources together would generate billions of dollars. There are, you know, the same advocacy organizations have defined a list of potential policy changes that would generate $20 million billion over 20 the next million. 10 years. Okay. So how much would it cost and what priority level do we assign it? I think that's a, a larger conversation with the legislature. See, I'm all for things like the, the, the gas tax and congestion pricing and things like that, but I think this is a much more it's a much more nuanced and a much more complicated problem. You know, you have a system that, you know, for 25 years we ignored maintenance to put money into expansion. Uh, and, and, and so we find ourselves $10 billion in the hole when it comes to, uh, when it comes to uh, uh, our maintenance needs. Just at things the, operating the yeah, way they should. Know, at the same time, we've had a billion dollars a year available to, to, to fix that. Uh, and the T has only been able to get $440, billion, uh, $440 million a year out the door until recently. Thankfully, yeah. Why, why was that? Just well, because because the MBTA is is such a dysfunctional place. Now it has gotten better. It's still not great. It has gotten better. The governor's basically taken control. Yes. of it, changed the way it operates. And, and, right? and the, but the problem is that if you were to hand the T two billion more dollars today, I'm not convinced it would be any better. That's because why this is no, because there's no big picture vision for what they're part aiming of it. for. That's part of it. But definitely, I, I I agree with that. But also because they have no capability or capacity to spend that money in, uh, in, you know, in, in a way that would really improve things. Adam, governors and legislatures around the country are stepping up on this issue, and it's in places you, you might not expect. Ohio, Alabama, places where Republican governors have signed gas tax increases to invest in their transportation system. Now, Charlie Baker doesn't like defining problems as number or budget problems. He likes to think about other things. So even if you put that aside for a second, there are other ways to think about how our system is failing. It's the largest source of greenhouse gas emissions of any sector of the state and air pollution, and we have the asthma capital of the United States in Springfield, Massachusetts. Are you talking right now, you're talking transit, not just public transit? They're, right? they're, they're tied the together. Transit? I mean, oh, okay. together. we right. cannot separate yes. those two things, yes. especially when one third of all MBTA riders are bus riders, and they are stuck in the same traffic that drivers are stuck in. Let me ask you, when you talk about how states that you wouldn't expect to be investing in this sort of thing are, isn't one of the luxuries that states like the ones you mentioned, or I, I grew up in Minnesota, and they've built this pretty, uh, pretty impressive light rail network, they have so much more open space to play with. And, we really, they, and they have the luxury of building from scratch, right? And conversely, here we have this, I, I believe it's America's oldest subway, right, which people tried out as a point of pride, but it actually seems to me it's a huge challenge when it comes to making it work the way it ought to. Well, there's a, tool, there's a tool that Charlie and I both support from different ends of the spectrum, which is congestion pricing, which was put in place in a place called London, which I think has us beat in terms of lived history by a Some few call it a, a world-class city. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> um, the day they put congestion pricing in place, they saw their traffic drop by 30%, and they raised hundreds of millions of dollars from that charge to invest in better bus service. And this is it can work there, it can work here. And this is basically, again, many viewers will know it, but it's, you're charging people more to drive in at peak hours to urge people to sort of spread their commutes around Correct. and drive but off. But the key is also then to plug those revenues back into improving alternatives because you can't just punish those who can't afford to pay without you need to also make sure that you're expanding the actually affordable, convenient, and sustainable mode of transportation, public transit. I want to talk about something that you uh, mentioned, among many other things on Twitter, Michelle, uh, this week. Um, the governor and the tone he strikes here, he initially came out and made the, to many people's minds, somewhat bloodless statement, I believe we're headed in the right direction on that stuff referring to the derailments. Uh, today, he sounded, I thought, a lot more empathetic. Let's take a look at, at what he had to say when he was asked about this. The Commonwealth overall and the MBTA is going to invest and is in the process of investing over a billion dollars in signals and switches and trains and tracks on the red line. Um, but I know it can't come fast enough for most people, and I would, I would include myself in that category. You've got to strike a balance between how fast you can do the work and continue to run the system. 
he actually, I, I think, expressed empathy at other points that, that we didn't, didn't see there. But um, you said the governor needs to ride the T. This is an argument that I've, I've also made, but I'm wondering why you think it's important that Governor Baker, who lives pretty close to the Swamp uh, Scott commuter rail stop, why do you think he needs to ride the system? There's no substitute for any policymaker to see what people are actually going through and recognize every little detail of the frustration, the delays, the overcrowding. Yes, the two derailments this week highlighted kind of shown a spotlight, uh, have shown a spotlight on just how fragile the system is and, and how much it matters, the, the ripple effects all across the region. But those of us who take the tea every day have seen it deteriorate day after day after day. Service has gotten worse, and all you have to do is get on a subway car, ask people, and they would tell them. Guys, I thought we had about 10 minutes left. Unfortunately, apparently we're done. So you need to come back and just talk to me for an hour about this sometime. It's your game. Right? One last thing, though, Adam. Sure. The fair hikes. The fair, oh, yes, hikes, the fair hikes should immediately be reversed. We can't ask people to pay for this kind of service. All right. Michelle Wu, Charlie Chippio, Chris Dempsey, thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you so much.